This is the first tutorial on array formulas from the series of array formula tutorials. The majority of Excel users know little or nothing about array formulas. I'm going to devote an entire part to this little used yet extremely powerful feature. Array formulas are one of the most rarely used but exceptionally efficient formulas. Often, using array formulas can help simplify your formula and it can also accomplish tasks in lesser steps and cells than it would take in normal formulas. Array formulas not only shorten formulas but also accomplish tasks which may not be possible otherwise. There are two tutorials on array formulas. The first one is an introduction to arrays and array formulas and includes some basic examples to whet your appetite. The second video builds on the first video and provides many useful examples that further demonstrate the power of this feature. So now let's look at what we're going to cover in this video. In this video, we're going to talk about definition of an array, benefits of using array formulas, then we're going to understand dimensions of an array, and finally, we are going to briefly look at how to work with array formulas. One of Excel's most interesting and most powerful feature is its ability to work with array in a formula. An array is a collection of items operated on collectively or individually, and these items are rows and columns. If you are able to understand the concept of array, you will be able to create elegant formulas that appear to perform magic. There are various benefits of array formula such as you can use it to count the number of characters in a range of cells. You can also use it to sum numbers that meet certain conditions such as the lowest values in a range or numbers that fall between an upper and lower boundary. You can also use it to sum every nth value in a range of values. One of the main benefits of using an error formula is that you can eliminate intermediate formulas in your worksheet. This makes your worksheet more compact and eliminates the need to display irrelevant calculations. Another positive point of error formula is that other users may not understand your formula and hence they will find it difficult to tamper with your sheet and or modify any error formulas. As mentioned in Excel, an error can be one-dimensional or two-dimensional. These dimensions correspond to rows and columns. For example, a one-dimensional array can be stored in a range that consists of one row, also known as a horizontal array, or one column, also known as a vertical array. A two-dimensional array can be stored in a rectangular range of cells. Excel doesn't support three-dimensional arrays, although its VBA programming language does. So now let's look at an example to understand multi-cell array formula. Let's say you have this particular data, which consists of price and quantity for each salesperson, and you would like to find out the total sales made by each salesperson very quickly. So go ahead and select the entire result range, which would be all the way from cell D2 through D11. Then type in an equal to sign. Then go ahead and select column B, which contains the price. Select the entire column. Then type in the multiplication sign. Then select the entire quantity column. And then press control shift enter once you do that your column would contain total sales revenue generated by each salesperson one dimensional horizontal arrays are separated by commas and one dimensional vertical arrays are separated by semicolons so let me show you what i'm talking about go ahead and select three cells in your worksheet, type in an equal to sign, 
then type in open curly bracket, type in 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, and then close curly bracket, and then press Control shift enter Notice what has happened. 1, 2, and 3 has appeared in three different cells, but in the same row. Now let's say I would like to transpose this. In other words, I would like 1, 2, and 3 to appear in these three cells. So, in other words, I would like 1, 2, and 3 to appear in the same column, but in three different cells. So go ahead, select those three cells, type in an equal to sign, type in an open curly bracket, and then type in 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, and then close curly bracket and control shift enter. Notice what has happened. It did not take 2 and 3 because I did not separate these three numbers using a semicolon. I just separated them by comma. So I need to go back and change the commas to a semicolon. So to semicolon and then press Control Shift Enter. Once I do that, notice what has happened. 1, 2, and 3 has appeared in the same column but in three different cells. So vertical arrays are separated by semicolons and horizontal arrays are separated by commas. Now let's say I would like to create a table in this range of cells, which is starting from cell D4 through F6. So I would like number 1, 2, and 3 to appear in row 4, and which is cell D4 through cell F4. And then I would like to have numbers 4, 5, and 6 to appear in cell D5 through F5, respectively, and finally 7, 8, 9 in the bottom row, which is row 6, and the cell is D6 through F6. So I'm going to select this entire range. So just for clarity, let me just outline this, put borders to it, and then type in an equal to sign type in open curly bracket, type in 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, and then type in semicolon because this is specifying that 1, 2, 3 is going to appear in this particular row and the following numbers are going to appear in the next row. So 4, comma, 5, comma, 6, and then again a semicolon, and then 7, comma 8 comma 9 close curly bracket and then press control shift enter once you do that notice it has created a table for me which contains 1 2 and 3 in the first row 4 5 6 in the next row and 7 8 9 in the final row now let's start working with array formulas Let's say you have this particular table with names of employees in it and you would like to count number of characters that exist in this entire table. So one way of doing it is finding out the length of each cell which is typing an equal to sign, type in len, open bracket, select this text, select this cell, close bracket and hit enter and then drag this formula all the way at the bottom and then go ahead and sum this entire range to find out the total length of characters in this particular range. Every formula simplifies this job for you so go ahead Type in an equal to sign, type in sum, open bracket, type in len, len, which returns the number of characters in a text string, then open bracket, select the entire range, which is from cell A2 through A7, 
close bracket and then close bracket for the sum function as well and then press control shift enter notice it has calculated the length of all the characters in this range of cells just by this particular formula so it has simplified the entire process hope this was useful this video was brought to you by CXO Learning Academy a premier learning initiative by CXO Math for any queries you can email us at learning at cxomath.com thank you